Hello there, this is Rom Wills coming back at you with yet another video. Thugs protect? Really? <laughs> yeah, y'all like, oh snap. Here we go again, right? Well, no, you know what? I, you know, every now and then I go across, uh, you know, I listen to snippets from videos and also in real life. And there's this thing, you know, there's always this thing about, you know, women going for thugs. And I know how I feel about that. I'd say it happens, but it's overrated. But you still have the women who say, I want me a thug. I want me a soldier. You know, I want me a guy because he's going to protect me. Um, Do they really protect? And would they protect a woman over a classic man? Because... The thing is, the implication is that that thug will somehow, is not only just, you know, will protect a woman more than a classic man, but somehow can fight. If you if you look at the subtext and, um, you know, how it's, in, it's implied that somehow that thug would, uh, you know, can fight better than that classic man. And... <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, but, you know, yeah, there's some thugs who can fight. But usually those are the ones who, like, were actually some trained dad, some trained fighters. Like, they, they actually trained in maybe boxing or something. But just the notion that a thug, quote-unquote thug, would protect a woman more so than a classic man is uh, to say, as my brother Obsidian would say, BONK! You know, that, I mean, that's some, <laughs> and I think about it, you know, I just think about too many times over the years where, you know, I've seen so-called thugs who get straight punked by, you know, that clean cut, uh, square type of dude, the classic man type of dude. I, I've seen too many instances, too many. You know, I think about like back in high school, right? Like, uh, back when I went to uh, the high school I did in D.C., Archbishop Carroll, uh, back in the 80s, you know, the football team was kick-ass. And, but in even the freshman and JV teams were kick-ass at the school, too. Now, I remember uh, a couple years in a row, the JV team would play this, uh, this school, the reform school, basically. I forgot what the name of the school was now. Now that I think about it, I was going to call one name, but that's the name of, uh, I would have called the name of this basketball school. So I can't remember the name of the school. And it'll probably come to me after I edit the video. But, you know, they would play this reform. The JV would play this reform school. Now you had, like, these juvenile delinquents, like certified juvenile delinquents. You put them on a football team, and, you know, they would come to the field. They'd be talking their little trash. And, you know, at my high school, you know, the JV made up of these middle-class kids, you know. You know, middle-class, good, clean-cut kids. And, you know, they play each other. My high school JV would beat the shit out of these little motherfuckers. They would just run them over. Like, like when I say beat the shit out, I mean, they would hit the fuck out of these motherfuckers. <laughs> you know? And, I mean, that, every, I mean, and I've seen too many instances. I, I remember this one time. I knew t these two parties. One was, like, this church-going dude, right? And the other one was a dude who had a long rap sheet for assault. Like, assault with weapons and being in and out of jail. And, you know, the dude with the assault, you know, with the assault charges, well, not charges, convictions, started some shit with the, you know, clean-cut church dude. That clean-cut church dude beat the shit out of him. Because <laughs> that clean-cut church dude was also a boxer. <laughs> and see, <laughs> you know, I got too, <laughs> got too many times. Like, I'll give you one more, right? Like, um, I remember, this was when, I've mentioned several times I used to work at this gym, right? Now, several gyms, but this one gym had a bunch of, uh, had a bunch of professional type of cats. Also had uh, police, lawyers, uh, business people, former pro athletes, everything, right? Male exotic dancers. Now, I remember, I never forget, it was one night, and it was a snowstorm out, right? Really big snowstorm in the D.C. area. 
And, you, you know, we still at the gym because these Bamas are going to get that left in. And I remember we were at the front desk and a group of us looked outside, right? And there were a couple, uh, there were a couple young guys, like around one of the members' cars, right? And the member, this particular member, if you ever heard this video, you know this dude was a serious pretty boy. I mean, straight up, he was a serious pretty boy. And I mean, but that dude could throw up some weight stuff. And I'll never forget the scene. These two guys, now, these were true to the game thugs because they would later that same night rob, uh, rob a liquor store that was in the same plaza as the gym, right? We looked out, saw these two boys hanging around this dude's car. It was a late model car because this dude, this dude was an engineer. I mean, this dude was making big money, right? Now, there's a snowstorm coming down. This dude walked out, walked out of the gym. With nothing on but like one of those teeny tiny muscle shirts, like a serious muscle shirt that was going to show most of his arms and his pecs, right? And some sweat. And walked out there and told them to get the fuck away from his car. And those two little motherfuckers went. And when he came back in, he, he just looked at us. He said, look, I was just showing them what they had to deal with. Look. You get a lot of women who, who think... Some thug type of dude is going to protect them. And I'm going to tell you what. These women who always say that have never been in the hood. <laughs> They've never been. It's like you can always, you can listen to them. You can look at them. It's always like that uh, awkward type or nerdy type of uh, girl who you knew was brought up um, sheltered. And never dealt with no true to the game like uh, thugs or something like that. So they romanticizing it. And they probably just sexually attracted to the dude anyway, which is what they really should just say. But don't 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 come off with that thing trying to act like, oh well, they they'll fight more. It was like, first of all, where the fuck you living at or going that you gonna need somebody to be a bodyguard for you like that? Like, you know, the whole world isn't like uh those video fights they be sharing on social media and stuff. Shoot, if you if you a woman and you mostly middle you middle class, you don't got family in the hood. The f way you going to like need like somebody to physically protect you like that, and even then, you still be better off with a classic man. Cause but shoot, a lot of those brothers see. Just because somebody look like they rough, like as in a thug or something, don't mean they actually are. I mean, you got a lot of clean-cut looking dudes who they t they were boxers, they taking martial arts, they hitting the gym, shit, they played sports, whatever. And on a deeper level too, even if a guy's kind of mild-mannered, like you know, in that video I talked about the house of the man and one of the uh, tenants and one of the archetypes is the warrior. Now see, the warrior isn't somebody who starred anything, but if you mess with somebody in a warrior's boundary, they will defend them to the death. See, that's the type of man who could be a peaceful dude. He he would even let people pick with him and stuff. But if you mess with his wife or children, he will kill you. And I've seen that. I shoot, you, you mess with the wrong person and they change up. You know, be like that old Richard Pryor joke and stuff about you know that dog turning into the exorcist and shit. Talking about you can't leave yet. Shoot, and I've seen that happen. You you get those dudes, you push their buttons wrong, and shoot, they don't care. Because one thing, one thing with the thug, and see, there's two types of like thugs out there. Cause you got some true to the game thugs. They usually mellow anyway. They don't really start shit, so I ain't really talking about. It. They can fight, but they try to avoid it. Like, but you can get the ones who try to act like and try to act tough. And usually if they talking loud, they the biggest bitches in the world. Yeah, I said it. Because if somebody really true to the game, they ain't going to say they ain't gonna say shit. They ain't going to avoid that shit. But if they got to go there, they'll go there. And I've met cats like that. They just like, they'll be soft spoken like, look, man, why don't you just keep walking, man? You know it's cool, all right? Don't want to do anything. And if you keep going, then, then you see that side of them. But... And usually guys like that, shoot, you know, they on some other level anyway. But, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of address that because, 
you know, I know there's a lot of stuff about classic men on uh, social media right now. But one thing, they ain't no punks. And I guarantee once this video drops, a bunch of dudes be telling me about what martial arts they're taking, how they used to box, how they beat the shit out of some thug. Because it's really, you know, it, you really you really can't tell, unless you're a fighter, you really can't tell another fighter. And many women can't really judge a fighter unless they're in that world. Because I, I remember, I'll give you another uh, story. I remember I trained uh, I trained in the Baltimore area with this uh, group of fighters. I can't really give too much information about them because they, they, let's just say they don't advertise online. You know, you, you got to know somebody even know about them, right? I trained with them. And if you saw them, other way, if you saw them outside, you wouldn't think much of them. But these were some deadly ass motherfuckers. These motherfuckers halfway on some ninja shit. But if you saw them, you wouldn't think so. Or in fact, another time too, right? I was at a martial arts tournament. And because uh, my oldest son used to take martial arts. So I was at a tournament and I was looking at the guys. I said, you know, none of the, if you saw these guys, they don't fit the image of fighters. But if, once you watch them fight, an actual fight, and anybody who's taking serious martial arts knows, like, nah, there's some dangerous shit there. These dudes, you saw something else. Because one thing about true fighters, true people who, who got that in them, they, shit, they kind of cool. They don't have any fear. They, they ain't going to, like, throw those hands up unless they have to. Because if they do, they trying to kill you. So... You know, I just wanted to talk. They, you know, this video ain't meant to be that deep or something. But, you know, it, it, I've just seen that whole thing for years. Oh, I'm getting with a thug because he'll protect me. Well, nah, he probably won't. Because as soon as a man get in his face, he'll probably run like a bitch. Because if you really think about it, that's why so many of them carrying guns and shit. Because they scared. Because if you're a real fighter and stuff, you ain't going to be scared of some, like, contact or whatever. So anyway, right, that's it, you know, there's a little bit of a ramble, but hey, y'all gotta give it to me, shoot, I'm, I'm still celebrating my birthday, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'm about to get some more, pour some more in the purple cup now, <laughs> anyway, man, hey, hey um, straight up though, I'll holler at y'all, y'all later. Peace and many, many blessings.